Welcome back to Tools and Track. In this episode, we finally say goodbye to the big Bible of Hawks. Still need that. I'm about to do some stuff, but beforehand, we always need to give the mighty mechanical holder a task. Yep. And the task uh, today, next time my mistakes. Um, to be fair to you, it, it was a mistake now, months later. Yeah. It wasn't a mistake at the time, it was a work of art at the time. What you've probably worked out by now is this. Um, I was really keen on this idea, it was brilliant, but now, having got the body work, this is going to cause more drama than it's going to solve. So as a result, I think what we're going to do is relocate how this makes the body work while still keeping the geometry intact. My idea for this is, we're going to add on a spar here and a spar here that's going to tie to this arm that lives underneath this panel. Once these are actually tack welded in, we can chop that, chop that, chop that, chop that, and then we'll have the new mint, which will clear the new spittle. I see all sorts of problems here, Thomas. What's that then? Well, this is part of the steering assembly. Yes. You could just chop it off, I suppose. Yes. But, uh, yes. Would you? Does that solve your problem? Aye, okay. <laughs> okay. Right, so in the last episode, we managed to get the upper wishbones finished. However, yes, I admit, we skipped a few steps, specifically making the jig for it. Now, that jig worked way better than I thought it would, which is kind of why I never filmed it in the first place, because I thought, this is going to be garbage. It wasn't. So, in this episode, we're going to start off by showing you how we made this jig. So, let's design it. Our measurements for the lower wishbones are quite clearly defined in the Big Bible box. The width that they need to be is a total of 318 millimetres between the centres of the bush mounts. So, the bush mounts we know to be 35 millimetres wide, you could do a really convoluted mass of times in 35 by 2, and then dividing it by 2, where you can just add 1 inch of 35 mil onto 318. 318 plus 35, 352 mil. So remember, just like the other one, it's going to be perfectly square. So let's work out what the width needs to be. So again, we've got between the centre measurements of 394 millimetres. We know that the bush carriers need to be 33.7 millimetres wide because of the bushes. So 394 plus 33.7, 427.3. Simples. Let's weld it. Really squared off an assembled jig. Next thing we need to do is work out where all of our bush pickups are going to go. Now, on the rear lower, there are basically four bush pickups, whereas on every other arm, there's only been two that attach it to the chassis. On this guy, there's going to be two that sit here, and the hub's going to be sitting in the middle of that, with the bush being the pivot point. So, what we're going to have to do here is work out where this locates on the jig. Now, having looked at the plans, it's a 91 millimeter gap from the center line useful. That means it'll be symmetrical whichever side we do so we can use the jig twice. What I need to do here is put a couple of plinths that we can locate them on 
and our drink is ready. Bloody long. So the rear bottom arms are probably going to be the most complex ones that we've done in the whole car. Talk about saving the best for last. So we are going to have two inboard bush carriers. They are going to be linked to two outboard bush carriers. Into that on the middle is going to go the hub, which holds the wheel, through which will go a bolt. So linking these two up. We're going to have to have a length of steel going here to here and a length of steel going here to here. Would that be enough? Well, no, because if we were to then remove the hub, these two float in space and don't really triangulate to each other. We'll need to link the two of them. That involves a bar that comes from here to here. Lots of nice, interesting and complex scallops we need to do here. Not to worry though, that's what the grinder's for. That in itself would probably be strong enough, but again, once we remove this, that guy can wiggle like that, and that guy can wiggle like that. Also, there's gonna have to be a suspension strut joining onto this. That doesn't need to go anywhere near here because we're gonna have a drive shaft running through the middle. So that needs to be offset, probably around about here. Therefore, we are going to have to gusset all of the middle of this too. With a big slab of steel, that will also give a landing point for our back pickup on the suspension. <sighs> so we know we've got a jig that ties in all of our outer bush mounts. Now we need to make sure that this here is located. The ones in the corner are obviously going to be located. So we need to put in a couple of blocks here that will locate these and make sure that they're spaced right. Once all of our bush mounts are in, we can look at putting in steel. You got that? These two first. Then that, then the plate, then the suspension pickup. Let's go. our first two support bars in. Now we're going to have to look at joining these up with this crossbar for uh, rigidity. I'm not going to take this out the jig for this though because <laughs> when we're welding, as I've found many times in the past with this, as soon as I put heat through this it's probably going to warp and change all the geometry. This is why we made a big jig that holds everything on the outside. Now that I can put this centre spar in, I mean like we're talking tack welding it, uh, it'll keep all the geometry in line. The only problem is it may need to come out to do some finer welds, so I'm not going to just spot weld this. I'm going to run as much seam as possible that I can get the welder into, and then we'll just tidy up any wee bits that I've missed once it's out of the jig. Hopefully that won't be too much heat and won't cause too many issues with warping.
Okay, so we now have a big Z. That's good. Now we're ready to put on this big mighty gusset. You'll notice that I had to take the thing out to get it welded, obviously, because we just weren't getting the welder in, but it has went back into the jig okay. What has not happened though, is it has not went into the jig without a fight. True to form, we've got a slight warp in this. The good thing is, now that I've buggered it back into the jig, it's, it fits. So if it fits in the jig, when we put the gusset on, it's going to pull everything back into alignment. That gusset's not going to take warp, it will hold everything tight. So, back into the jig, and a lot of seam welding for a gusset. Right, this steering column mount is uh, becoming completely and utterly overcomplicated for no valid reason whatsoever. The original mount works, it just fills on the new glass fibre part. So, rather than bugger it out and have to do all the geometry again, all we need to do is make sure the glass fibre part fits without fouling. Now the glass fibre is 3mm thick, so as long as there's 3mm of relief in this, but it's still got the strength, there's a problem. So the solution to that looks like this. Well, we've redistalled the front uh, upper arm mounts because they've still been sitting with like square edges for long enough, but nobody wants to see that because it's just literally cutting with an angle grinder and then flattening down with a flat wheel disc. Well, you do want to see it? Here's, that. Here's the world's quickest montage. Right, sorted. Now, let's go to the next thing. Ah. Old man creaky legs. Marathon over. And I've chucked these bushes in, don't get too excited just yet. It's just to make sure that they're going to line up to the brackets that were on the car, and they do. So that's a relief. But yes, this is going to need a wee flatten back, a wee run over of etch primer, put these bushes out, and then next week, well, next week we need to start looking at suspension. So that's uh, going to be something to look forward to. Don't get too excited, it's not like I'm going to start slurging lots of money on fancy time coilovers or something like that. But we do need to work out where the geometry for this needs to sit because it's finally time to say goodbye to the big Bible of box. Thanks for watching guys. Everyone who hasn't done it, subscribe, bell, do all that stuff. All our Patreons that are running up the side here, massive thanks. A good few of you have joined us in the past week or so and we really do appreciate the support. If you haven't done it, it is funding this project. It's not like I'm taking coin home and spending it on drugs. Really do appreciate any support. The more we get, the wilder this will become. It's all going into the low cost. Thank you again, everyone, for joining us. We will be back next week with more fun. More headaches, probably, as well. That's it. See you later, guys. I've had a look in the big Bible of bollocks. And I mean, like, I know what I'm talking about said there's some things missing. But nowhere at all does it mention the pickup mount for the rear. So, I'm going to have to go and do some research with this. I don't know how we're going to do it. I, 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 <laughs> I really don't know how we're going to do it. Uh, let me think. I can't, I can't just guess where this needs to go. Um, we might need to put it in the car for this.